Welcome to Cavaletto Studios. I'm Chris. Today we will roll the main areas of the body like the back, the shoulders, the glutes, the calves, and the quads. We will then use a tennis ball to release the chest and shoulder area, but stay to the very end for a surprise bonus add-on with the feet. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start seated in the roller long uh, behind us across the mat. And we're going to start by leaning back so the upper shoulder blades are on our back. <sighs> I just get comfy here. So first thing we're gonna do is warm up the upper back. Reach your fingertips behind your ears. Again, not interlacing because we don't wanna crank on the head, but just nice and wide elbows. Press the feet into the floor. And the first thing we're gonna do is roll that upper back. So as you roll, you roll down to about where the belly button would meet in the middle of the back and then all the way back to the top. We're not rolling the neck, just to the top of the shoulder blades. It's slow and controlled. We're not rushing through anything. Nice and slow. Almost there. A couple more times. You might get a natural chiropractic adjustment. Last one. And then I want you to find the middle of those shoulder blades and then go ahead and lower the hips all the way down to the floor. And then I want you to scoot onto your left hip. You can drop your knees to the left and then rotate towards that left shoulder blade. And then take your left arm and bring it all the way across your body to the right, like you're gonna hold onto your right shoulder and then hold your left elbow with your right hand and then roll east and west, side to side. So you're bringing your left tricep to the roller and then you're rolling backwards all the way across that left shoulder blade and then back all the way into that left tricep and then into that shoulder blade. So today, as we roll these areas, we're gonna later on get to the chest and we're going to get some trigger points in the chest and we're really going to open up and um, get that range of motion a little better through that upper body side to side keep on rolling now if your head gets tired just let it rest for a moment on your shoulder and then roll all the way back onto the shoulder blade a couple more so you're not even really getting into the armpit, you're getting behind that shoulder right into that tricep. Let's do three more rolls. Maybe you feel some stuff going on here. Maybe it's pretty good. One more. Excellent. Now you're going to roll all the way back onto the shoulder blades. Bring both hands behind the head again. Center your hips back on the floor and let's roll the upper back again. And maybe you'll get another little adjustment there because that left side is nice and loose. One more time. And then find those, the middle of those shoulder blades again and lower those hips. Good, now you're gonna drop onto your right glute and drop your knees to the right and then go on to that right shoulder blade. Now I'm just gonna turn around real quick just so I can be showing both sides. So you're on the right hip. This time, as you're leaning on that right shoulder blade, bring the right arm out, hold on to your left shoulder, and the left arm holds on to that right elbow. So you're just supporting the arm as you roll all the way to that right side, placing that right tricep on that roller, and then backwards. So if you've had any shoulder injuries, you might find some trigger points back here. We're really getting into that rear deltoid, all the way back into the, all those connections and that tricep behind that shoulder. Anybody feeling that? It can be a little tender, especially on the right side when you use the mouse on the computer, that tissue, that 
that fascia tissue connects all the way up this back line of the arm into that back shoulder and upper back area. So just continue to rock side to side. Onto the roller with the arm and then off the roller to the shoulder blade. So the arm goes on and off. And you can not add as much pressure if it's sensitive. We got three more rolls to go. All the way back. Hopefully it's getting a little easier as you roll. Getting into that infraspinatus, some of those rotator cuff muscles. We got one more to go. And then we're gonna roll all the way back onto those shoulder blades, bring those fingers behind the head, support it, lengthen through the neck, lift those hips, and let's use those feet to roll the upper back again. Feeling that nice adjustment. One more roll to the top and to the bottom. Find the middle of those shoulder blades and lower the hips. And then go ahead and push yourself all the way up. What a great way to get started. There goes my roller. Go ahead and reach the hands under the, the thighs and hold on to the fingertips or the wrist. Drop your chin to the chest and just stretch out that area. Leaning back as you hold on to the thighs. So you can hold the thighs or you can hold a wrist, whatever works for you. And let your head gently turn side to side. And then we're going to sit up nice and tall, a couple shoulder rolls. And just notice if there's any tension. You might still feel a little stiff in the chest, but we're going to get to that area and really get it to open up later on. But first, moving on down to the glutes. So we're going to pop up onto that foam roller. So use those arms to lift yourself up. Feet flat, knees bent, and just lean to whichever side you want. I'm going to lean onto my right because I'm here, because we're going to do both sides. And use your feet to roll to the top and the bottom of the glute. Getting that whole area, finding any of those trigger points or speed bumps. All the way. So let's go a little deeper. Let's cross that right ankle, open it up and roll from the top to the bottom. Just a couple more here, and then we're gonna use that, um, our leverage by drawing to our right elbow, and then coming a little deeper into that glute, and just a gentle rock side to side. Now we wanna get this loosened up a bit, because another surprise I have for you later is with the tennis ball, we're gonna try a different way to get into the lateral area of those glute muscles. So you're going east and west right now, and we're gonna get into there a little deeper, but you want it to be left and right onto that roller. You want it to be a little looser. And then slowly release that leg, come up off that arm, and we're just gonna switch sides. So I want you to lean to the opposite side. So now I'm on my left, whichever side is good. You're gonna use those legs and roll that glute. All the way to the top and to the bottom. And it's not quick, it's a slow controlled movement, feeling and finding those speed bumps. Anything going on? One glute compared to the other one might be tighter. Now let's go a little deeper, cross that left ankle over the right thigh and roll that glute all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. The, the goal here is to kind of relax as you're doing it as much as you can, even though you're hitting those tender spots and those speed bumps and smile at the same time. Now we're gonna go a little deeper. Let's drop to the elbow, find the middle of the glute and then just rock it side to side, east and west. And just notice the difference, left and right. 
as you roll across that glute into that side, that tissue towards the outside edge of that glute, the butt cheek. One more, and then we're gonna lift up off that arm, uncross the leg, and now we're gonna sit in front of the roller and straighten out those legs. Now the side that you rolled first is the leg that you're gonna pull into the chest and cross it over the thigh. You're gonna lift up nice and tall and let's just take both arms and squeeze them around. So again, holding on to the elbows like we did before as you hold on to that knee and see if you can pull the opposite elbow and shoulder towards that knee. So really wrap that elbow around. Flex the leg that's straight out on the floor. So I'm holding onto my right knee and I'm twisting to the right because I'm holding onto that right knee. So whichever leg you're holding onto, twist towards it, hugging it in nice and tight. Take a deep breath in, lengthen through the neck. See if you can turn your head a little further back. Good. Now, I want you to take whatever the arm, so I'm on my right side, right leg. I'm taking my right arm and reaching it behind and just see how that feels. And then take that right arm and li lift it and reach it to the back wall. Now, if you're on your left, you would do your left arm. And just see where that feel, how that feels in the chest. And then you're gonna release and come back to the front. Now we're gonna try the left side or the opposite side, whatever side you were on. I'm gonna straighten out my right leg. I'm gonna wrap my arm nice and tight and I'm gonna hold on to the elbows again and lift nice and tall. Hug that knee in, stretch that glute. See if you can bring your shoulder a little closer to the knee. That's it. Feel that glute stretching in that whole hip. You might even feel it into the QL, quadratus lumborum, like that low back area. Now the arm that's on top, you're gonna release it and reach it out. And see how that feels in that chest wall. Where are you tight? We're gonna get into that chest and get it loosened up, that pectoralis muscle that connects into that bicep. And then we're gonna release it all the way down. Shake it out. So while you're here, just bring that roller down by your feet and we're gonna go to the calf muscles. So starting out with both legs on the roller, let's take them apart a little bit wider than the hips and then I want you to just rock and roll your hips and your body. Everything goes side to side. Pushing into the roller. Get the inside edge of the ankle and the outside edge. Then you're gonna bring the feet together closer. And again, same thing. So you're pushing, as you rotate, you're kind of pushing into the roller so your hips lift up a little bit, as long as there's not too much pressure on your wrists or your hands. Good. And then flex and point the feet to the sky. And notice the ankles and how they're rotating. And then walk the roller up just a little bit so it's a little above the ankle now. And I want you to rock and roll side to side again. And just notice if it's more tender on the inside or the outside. If your wrists get tired here, feel free to drop to the elbows. This is an option. And you can even lay on your back. Listen to your body, do what feels good to you. A couple more rock and roll side to side. Now I want you to start to circle the feet. So you're drawing big circles with those ankles as you rotate side, uh, side to side on those legs. So I'm rolling from my right hip to my left hip. Then you're gonna change direction on the circle and the rotation. I know you have to think about it. I'm making you use your brain here. And then come back to center, point and flex. And this is where you might notice which ankle feels a little more restricted than the other. Then you're gonna walk the roller up, probably a couple inches, and again, rock it side to side. <sighs> Trying to relax your feet and your ankles at the same time. So you're going right and left, rotating to the left hip and the right hip, right butt cheek, left butt cheek, and your feet are turning. And then start to roll your ankles as you rotate side to side. 
you're going to feel a change in that rotation and then change directions as well. So you rotate the ankles the other way. And then we're going to walk the roller up to the meaty part of the calf, right kind of towards the bottom of it, and rock side to side. So just this is a different way to get into the calf muscles. If you're doing, you know, hanging out, watching TV, just get tired of doing the same old way. And also when you go side to side here, you can really find those trigger points. And um, when the muscle, the tri striations go this way and you're going across side to side, you might find those trigger points a little. And then start to roll the ankles. Circle them around as you shift your body. Again, same thing. You can still go to your elbows if that feels better to you, if it's too much on the wrist or on your back. And then change direction, circle the feet the opposite way. It's also a little bit more gentle than just digging in there if, you're in, if your calves are super tight. So we're going to move up. Now we're pretty close to the knees, but never going behind those knee joints. And we're going to rock side to side. So now we are definitely in that meaty part of the calf. Everybody's leg lengths are different. So you might need to do an extra one of these. If you have longer calves, maybe you're already done and your legs are a little bit shorter. Don't forget to roll the ankles as you rotate side to side. And it's good for the brain too, having to do this at the same time, challenging our thoughts as our muscles and our brains have to work together and then change direction. Almost there. And then now straight up and down, I want you to point and flex those feet. And just notice again. And you can even do a small gentle bend and straighten. And then keep the legs where they are. Sit up nice and tall, but just lean forward. And now turn the feet, bring the big toes together and then out. Toes together and out as you're flexing the feet and then point the toes and turn them out and in. The whole leg is opening and closing. Good. And then point and flex one more time, toes straight up to the sky. Excellent. Now go ahead and walk that roller away from you and bring the feet straight out. And so now your feet are against the roller. Now you're going to flex the right foot only. Keep the left foot onto the roller. Lift up tall through the spine. And I want you to place your hands on either side of your knees or your shins, wherever you can reach. But keep that the spine tall so we're not collapsing into it. I want you to just lean into it. And then just gently shake out that right leg. Shake it, shake it. Keeping that right toe flexed. Ankle flexed. Now some of you might be able to reach the toes. You can try to do that. If you have a strop, if you want to use a strop, you can always do that. Or just keep your hands on the floor. Lots of options here. Now I want you to relax the foot, but keep it, it's still up straight up, but see if you can keep it um, more on the relaxed side than, than super straight and flexed. And just breathe. Maybe you feel some blood flow or things going on in the toes. Now you're going to relax the foot against the roller and we're going to flex the left foot and sit up tall again. Just find how that feels. Notice the difference. Walk the hands forward and one leg is going to be different than the other and that's okay. Now I want you to gently start to move that left knee up and down. And notice the difference. Maybe you have more range of motion. Maybe that foot can flex more than the other. Maybe it can't. Just notice the difference. If you have plantar fasciitis in one leg and foot and not the other, you might feel a difference as, as well. And then just let that leg rest and hold it there for a moment. Whether you're holding the toe or not, it's okay. And then release. Sit up nice and tall and just let the feet be neutral. 
and then flex your right and then left foot. And maybe there's a little difference, maybe a little more range of motion. They don't feel as stiff. That's great. All right, we're going to cross the legs and bring the roller close in, and we're going to shift to the quads. My favorite part. So, like I said, we're doing all the main parts today of the body, the major muscle groups we did, upper back and shoulders and glutes, calves, and now quads. So the roller is right above those knees, and then we'll get in with the tennis ball, so some major trigger points. So I want you to move your body slowly up and down about an inch, just an inch. Just let it slowly rotate. Now we're going to keep a little bit with our side to side theme today. But what we're going to do is we're going to bend the right knee and I want you to drop that right leg side to side. Just gently notice what's going on in the back, in the quad, in the hip. And hopefully you don't have too much pain. If it's super painful, then just take a break. Now you're going to release that foot all the way down and we're going to bend the left leg, left knee, and just bring that foot gently side to side. Now you'll notice a difference from one quad to the other as you rock it. So where that left foot is pulling right and left, rocking across that front thigh on that left leg. Then you're going to bring the leg down. Good. Now roll forward and back one inch again, just right where you were. Now we're going to gently walk the elbows backwards and move the roller up an inch and go forward and back an inch. And hopefully this is feeling okay because we're going to do our right and left. So let's bend the right leg, right knee, and draw that right foot left and right. So you're rocking across the right thigh. This is another way just to get into that tissue. If you find a trigger point, you might want to pause on it and rotate the ankle or move off of it if it's too painful. We want to listen to the body. Go ahead and bring that foot down. When we bring it down, that's sometimes when we really feel it. If you need to move around a little, that's fine because we're going to bend the left knee and draw that foot left and right side to side. Sometimes it feels like you might be rolling over cords in the thigh, like big ropes if the tissue is really tight. Almost there. Can you tell the difference? I got a spot right there. Anybody find some spots? We're going to bring the leg back to neutral and bring it down and let's do a forward and back one inch. And then walk the elbows backwards an inch so that roller moves up the thigh. Move it up and down an inch. And then find your center, bend your right leg and draw that leg gently side to side. So as you've noticed, we're gently, we're moving up the thigh, gently, slowly, finding those areas that might be a little bit stuck. And then we're going to straighten out that right leg and bend the left. Pull that left foot right and left. Hopefully that's feeling okay. Are you finding your areas that you need to work on? Find a center and then lower that leg and then just forward and back an inch right where you just had that knee bent. It's amazing how it gets in there a little deeper when you do that. And then walk the elbows back. Move yourself forward and back an inch. And again, all of our leg lengths are a little different. So maybe you're already done and you're taking a child's pose. Maybe your legs are longer and you need to do an extra. Find your center, bend your right knee and bring that right foot left and right side to side. Rotating across the top of that quad. Just massaging things out.
Now, as you get to the top, you might find some spots if your hip flexors are super tight. Find your center, lower that leg, and then bend the left. Or maybe yours was more in the middle of the quad. Or it could be down by the bottom if you have, by the knee, if you have inflammation going on. Side to side with that left foot going across the top of that quad. Now we're going to bring it center and lower that leg, forward and back one inch. Now if you need to keep moving up the leg, go for it. We're going to slide off the back of the quad onto the knees. Now we're going to separate our knees and feet together and we're going to do a child's pose. Just really bend through those knees, feel that nice stretch. Bring the roller in front of you and reach those arms and stretch it out. And notice what's going on with the armpits. Do a gentle rock side to side. Good, and then we're gonna slowly come all the way up. Nice, and we're gonna do just a little test here. So in our child's pose, I want you to bring your elbows to the roller and bring your palms together. And just bring your forehead to the roller and then think, bring your thumbs towards the back of your head and then straighten out your arms and then bring your thumbs to touch your head. Palms are together and then straighten out your arms. Thumbs together. So this is maybe something going on in your shoulder or your or your tricep bring it hands in and out so we did a, all the main muscle groups so now we're going to start to dig into some of those little areas straighten and bend good now from here i want you to bring the roller a little closer just slide the middle of your right tricep or the right back of the arm onto the roller. You can even let your head rest on it. Palm turns up. I want you to straighten and bend at that arm. Straighten and bend. Good. One more. And then when your hand comes up, I want you to rotate your palm down and straighten and bend. You're just getting into that tricep. Just an extra little bonus here. One more and then come up. Now you're going to switch. I want you to bring your left tricep right in the middle. Good. Palm is up and let your head rest and then straighten and bend. And you might notice a difference between one side and the other. Continue and then bring the hand up, turn the palm down and press, bring that hand up and down. Palm is facing the floor now. And just notice the difference where you're feeling this. Is it the tricep? Is it the shoulder, the back, where it's pulling? Maybe it's all of the above. Last one and then release. Excellent. So go ahead and um, bring that roller to the side all the way to the side. So this is a perfect time. We're gonna roll, lay back down onto our bellies. And we're going to slide the right hand under the shoulder, under the chin. And you're gonna reach your left hand back and grab hold of your left foot. Now, if this doesn't work, an option is to lay on your right side and bring your left foot behind you to stretch that quad. So we are still, we're working our way. You'll see where we're going, we're gonna get into the chest, but first let's stretch our quads. So we're gonna bring the left foot to the glute. Good, now I want you to kick your foot into your hand. See if you can straighten out your arm and then pull that foot. Relax your leg, don't kick it in anymore. Now pull the foot to the glute and then Kick it into the hand again, extend it out, and then relax the foot or the leg, and then pull the foot to the glute again. So nice. Try to really relax that whole body, the whole hip area, and then just keep the foot there, but squeeze the glutes. 
a little extra stretch. We're going to release that left foot and switch sides. So bring your left hand under your chin, reach for your right foot or use a strap. Now, if you cannot reach your foot, lay on your side and bring your foot behind you and just really stretch out that hip. And you can still do the same thing by squeezing the glute. Just hold and pause here. Holding that foot in. Notice what's going on with the, the hip flexor. All the way down to the knee. Now straighten out the arm and kick your foot into the hand. And then let the leg relax back down onto the floor and pull your foot to the inner glute. I'm going to do one more time. Straighten the arm, kick the foot into the hand. And then relax it and bring that foot, glute, foot and glute together. And you're breathing. And then we're going to let go of that leg. Now you're on your belly. This is where you want to get one tennis ball. And you're going to find, so since you're on your belly, and you can also do this on a wall, that's fine. But you're going to place the tennis ball um, basically right at the top of the chest, um, right in the center of the, find your sternum, and then go to the left side. So you're going to place that tennis ball right underneath the left. Let me take my microphone so I don't lay on it. <laughs> so the tennis ball is right on the center so I'm going to sit up and stretch. So you find your sternum and go to the left of it. You're going to lay right there. So it's on the inside of the shoulder, right in the center of that chest wall. And just lay there on that tennis ball. You can bring your hand under your head. You're just going to make adjustments so it's comfortable. And then I want you to start to slide your hand forward and up the mat above your head. Keeping your palm down, elbow on the floor, and then slowly slide your elbow down toward your rib cage, and then slide it back up. And when you slide it up, you might be feeling things. Then you're going to start to go out to the side. Now, if you need to, you can put, keep your fingertips on the floor and just lift your elbow off, or see if you can lift the whole hand, and then relax the arm into the floor and then lift so it's a little contraction of the chest and then relax bring your hand a little lower keeping the elbow slightly bent and maybe a little lift and then melt into the floor again with the arm pull a little bit lower notice what's going on if you have any maybe lift the elbow up and down the hand play around with what feels good to you and then a little bit lower. Now I want you to sweep it all the way up like you're making a snow angel, but you're on your belly. And then sweep it back down. And then sweep it back up. Elbows slightly bent. Couple more times. That last one. Excellent. We're gonna switch sides. So now take the tennis ball, find your sternum, roll it to the right, the right side, and then come all the way back down. Put the mic back on, and then let your head rest on your arm. Bring your right arm out to the side. I'm going to turn around so you can see. So again, you're on the sternum, come out to the side. So you can really get into that area. And the arm is out. First start by reaching it up over your head. And then bring it back down a couple more times, reaching it up. And back down. Last one. Then you're going to reach it out to the side, maybe a little lift off the floor. And then let it, the arm rest into the floor. 
Now for ladies out there, if you've had any reconstructive or um, breast cancer, things like that, things removed, lymph nodes, just you know, be mindful. Maybe instead you're just doing a stretch instead of putting a tennis ball there. Or you're using more of a squishy ball. That will work too. And then you're gonna walk your hand a little bit lower, elbow bent. Let the arm always, think about the rest of your body. Are you tensing up in the hips? Is there a pain there? Try to relax here. Take a break if you need it. And then walk the hands a little lower. If we work at a desk, if you work on a computer, sometimes these muscles get very tight, especially on that right side using the mouth again. Just keep moving that arm a little bit lower. Notice if there's anything going on in the shoulder, the upper back. And then once you're there, down the elbows a little bit closer to the rib cage, then you can start to do your opposite, that snow angel, sweeping the arm up and then down. So elbow stays close to the floor and the hand, and then sweep the hand up and back down and all the way back up one more time and back down. Then you're gonna bring the hand in close so you can lift off the tennis ball. Now you're just gonna lay on your back. So just flip all the way over onto your back. Keep the tennis ball close. We'll get to that in a moment. I want you to bring your arms out like cactus arms, knees are bent, feet flat. Just take a couple deep breaths here. I want you to take your legs and if you're comfortable you're going to straighten out your legs make sure your back is not overarching and you're feeling comfortable here and then take both arms keep the elbows wide 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 keep them bent bring your fingertips kind of like you're making a curve over your head your fingertips are coming together but your elbows are staying bent right above your head and try to keep your elbows as close to the floor as you can. Now you might notice like one arm's up and one arm's down. It's like a snow angel, but your elbows stay bent. You're just keeping the hands above the head. Pause here. And then slowly bring your elbows down to about shoulder level. Elbows are bent 90 degrees. And see if you can get your elbows and your hands on the floor, the backs of them. And then walk your shoulder blades down, away. And you might not feel anything. Maybe you straighten your arms out to the side. And maybe you reach them out. And then bring both arms all the way across the body. Give yourself a hug. Pull your elbows towards your belly button. And we'll be stretching the chest a little bit more on the roller. But first, one more spot. Let's use that tennis ball again. Bend both knees, hips on the floor, back on the floor. So we're gonna start on the left. So what I want you to do is place that tennis ball, tilt slightly to your right, place the tennis ball right in the, pretty much the glute, right in the middle of that glute, the meaty part of the glute, and then rock onto it. Now I want you to take that left leg and completely drop the knee, the left knee to the left side, and you roll onto the outside edge of your foot, of that left foot. And we're just going to hang out here. Aren't you glad we rolled the glute before? <coughs> I want you to just feel what's going on there. Make adjustments. If it's super painful and you found a trigger point, maybe you need to ease off. If you feel like you want to make an adjustment and move to a different spot, you can. Keep on doing that. Feeling that tennis ball, like finding the trigger points, getting that, t that stuck tissue to, to release, to hydrate. And just a couple more breaths here. We're gonna use the left hand, place it underneath your, underneath your left thigh, flex your left foot, and then slowly assist your leg coming up and then drop it back down. So now you're gonna move through it. So drop the knee out to the side and back up, rolling from the bottom of the foot to the outside edge of the foot. 
Now one more, and this time we're going to drop the knee out to the side, and so you're on the outside edge of the foot, and then straighten out that leg, and then flex the foot, pull it back in, keep the foot flexed, push the heel to the front of your mat, and pull it back in. So you're still on your back, laying on your back, and flex and push out. And last one, pull it back in and lift that knee up. Release the tennis ball, place it to the side for a moment. Bring that left knee tight across your left thigh. Walk your right knee, right foot out to the right just slightly, and then drop both knees to your right. So you're really gonna stretch through that left glute. Now while you're here, we're going to bring our left hand out to the side, and you can either straighten it or keep it elbow bent, and then keep your head neutral, looking up at the sky. And just feel that nice stretch in the glute and maybe the chest. You want your left shoulder to stay on the floor, if you can. If you are super tight in the chest, you might be feeling a bit of a stretch here and then slowly bring those knees back to neutral. So this is where we're gonna get that tennis ball and go to the other side. Slightly lean to your left, place the tennis ball under the meaty part of the glute, and then drop that right knee to the right side. I will turn around so you can see. So you're on that right glute, and you're dropping the knee to the right, on the outside edge of that right foot, and we're just letting it rest right there. Might be a spot, a trigger spot. Getting into that glute knead up there on the outside edge, the top. Make adjustments for what works for you. And just breathe. So we just wanna hold that spot let the, everything kind of start to relax. Notice if you're holding tension in the body. Now we're going to take the right arm under the right thigh and then slowly bring it up and then let it gently drift back onto that tennis ball and then slowly bring it back up and let it drift down. Last one, up. And this time we're going to roll back onto the outside edge of the foot, slowly straighten out that right leg. And flex the foot, pull it in. Two more times. Straighten out. Can you tell I'm struggling with that too? And pull it in. We got one more. And straighten out. And you never want to force it. You want it to feel okay. And pull it in. And then slowly bring that knee up. Release that tennis ball, place it to the side. Bring that right knee nice and tight across the left thigh. Walk your left foot to the left. So you can drop both knees to your left, get that nice glute stretch. Bring your right arm out to the side, like a right angle, feeling all that stretching going on through the glute. Maybe your chest, maybe it's the QL, quadratus lumborum into that low back. That's a whole nother video. But feel that stretch through the chest, opening things up. We're almost there. And then slowly coming back to center, walking the foot back into center, uncross the legs. Let's hug the knees into the chest. Give them a squeeze. And then you can roll to your side or you can roll yourself all the way up. It's up to you how you come up. We're going to straighten out the legs in front. Pull the glutes out. Open up that chest. Take a deep breath. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, fold. Reach for the toes. Notice the difference. And then inhale, reach the arms up. Let's take both hands behind the back, fingertips facing the body, and then open up the chest. Leaning, not letting your head drop back, but lengthening through the neck and the spine and open the chest. Slide both shoulder blades back together. 
and don't let your chin fall forward. Line things up and then gently look right and slowly look left. We're going to bring the head to neutral. Flip your fingertips around. So now your fingers are facing away from the body. And again, opening up the chest. Notice the difference. Not lifting the head too high, but keeping things neutral. Flexing the feet. Look to your left. And then look to your right. And then back to center. And then release. A couple shoulder rolls. Up, back and down. Go ahead and cross your legs. Ah, sit up nice and tall. Just let your head gently drop side to side. So now hopefully you're a little looser in the chest and the upper back. And you can reach a lot higher and wider in all different directions. Oh, wait, hold on. We're not done. I have a bonus for you. You're going to need that tennis ball again. We're going to work the feet. Woohoo! Let's stand up and keep going. So we're going to stand nice and tall. You're going to line up those toes. Let's check how far we can reach. Either side, just give it a reach. Feel how it feels in the shoulders, the hips, the arms. And then exhale, forward fold. Reach for those toes. Let your head hang heavy. Gentle rock side to side. Notice where the hands reach, how far. And then notice if there is a hamstring or a hip that's tighter. And then slowly, once you pick which side, roll it all the way up. Nice and tall. So if you pick the right side, stay, pick, stay on the right. If you pick the left, stay on the left. If you have no idea, just pick a side. You're going to place the tennis ball underneath the ball of the foot and gentle press release and curl the toes and lift the toes to start with. Then you're going to rock side to side, side to side. The heel is on the floor and you're massaging out the bottom of the foot. So you can see right here, I'm on the side, rocking side to side. Now, keeping your heel down, I want you to move the tennis ball further up into the middle of the arch and rock side to side again. Now, the goal is to keep moving your tennis ball further back up the arch, but keeping that heel on the floor. So just keep inching it back, finding any spots, rocking that foot side to side. See if you can even lift the toes as you rock and then relax the toes and noticing the difference. Now you're going to rock the foot, the ball of the foot all the way forward. Keep the tennis ball in that arch and rock side to side. And then move it a little bit further back. So now you're hitting the heel and do a little rock. And then draw that tennis ball forward and back along the arch from the toes to the heel, getting along the outside edge and the inside edge. And then when you're done with that foot, I want you to take it behind you and then just curl the toes, like really stretch through the ball of the foot, press the heel into the floor. And then when you come up, flip the toes and just flip the foot Plantar flex, dorsi flex, both directions, flipping from the top of the foot to the bottom of the foot, stretching out all that fascia that you just rolled. And then when you come back down onto the heel this time, I want you to gently rock the whole foot, the right foot side to side. So you're on the back foot and you're rocking it side to side. Good. Now line up those toes again. I'll move the tennis ball. We'll get to the other side in just a moment, but first you, I want you to test it. So toes are forward, reach it up. Notice the difference on the side. Might feel a little different and then exhale, forward fold. Reach for the toes and see if you can reach a little further on the side that you just did the toes. 
And you might not notice such a drastic difference because we just rolled everything else. And then slowly roll all the way up. And let's do the other side. So left foot or your other foot. I'm on my left. And you're gently pressing and releasing. So right in the ball of the foot, press and release like a gas pedal, press, release, but don't floor it. <laughs> and then gently press and rock side to side. I'm just massaging out the foot. Now I want you to move the tennis ball further into the arch, keeping the heel on the floor, rocking that foot side to side. Right and left. And then move it up a little more into the arch, finding any tender spots, anything going on there. Get as deep into that arch as you can, keeping that heel down, rocking it side to side. And then when you can't go any further, you're going to flip it so the ball of the foot goes on the floor. That tennis ball still stays in the back of that arch and rock it side to side. And then you're going to move towards that heel. A little bit of a rock. Now don't forget, we still have to go long wise. So you're going to roll that tennis ball along the arch, forward and back, on the inside of the arch, the middle, and the outside edge. If you find a spot, just do a little pressure on it and release, as long as it's not painful. And then after you've done everything, we're going to bring the foot behind us. Press it into the floor, lift into the ball of the foot, flip the toes, and then stretch it back out all the way to the heel, and then flip the foot. So you're stretching all the different angles, front and back. One more, flip the toes, press them back. Now press the heel and rock it side to side. Stretching all that tissue all the way up through the ankle, the Achilles tendon and then release. Go ahead and slide that tennis ball out of the way. Line up those toes. One last check. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. See how much further you can reach those arms. Notice the hamstrings, the hips, the head hangs heavy. And then slowly roll it all the way up. Reach the fingertips. Exhale, palms to heart space. And you're done. Namaste.